Hey everybody, this is Tom with Burmy Bag. Today I want to take you through the procedure that I use to separate worms from castings in my non-flow through systems for the most part. But uh, occasionally if a flow through system has too many worms in it for some reason, depending on you know the circumstances, this is another method that worked really well to separate those worms uh, from those castings without having to go through the long procedure or time consuming procedure of trying to do a pile separation with light and stuff like that. What I mainly use this for is for the vermi bag totes. Now any of you that remember the original vermi bag tote, I had some migration panels inside of it and those actually worked really well but they're, one they were a little difficult to make especially for the cost of the bag. It was difficult to add those panels in there and two it's just as easy to actually do this separation you know outside the bag and taking all that material if you let your vermi bag tote get pretty full before you actually do the harvest on it there's so much material in there it's hard to get all that material into a big heap in order to do some separation so i found that this method works the best and it would work perfect for anybody that's running systems in buckets and stuff like that now this is right along the same lines as doing the baiting that i do in the containers but this is on a much larger scale so what I'm going to use is a large Rubbermaid tub, you know, a 15 gallon or 14 gallon or whatever they are, the larger ones. And then also a small, I think it's like a two gallon uh, Rubbermaid tub. Now you can use whatever you want. Uh, what's important is that the larger container and the smaller container, there's room all the way around the edges for you can put your castings and stuff in to do the separation. And I'll show you that as we do it. So what I'm going to use is, this is like a little two gallon Rubbermaid tub. And I'm going to be placing this inside a 14 gallon Rubbermaid tub. And you can see all the holes that are along the side of it. Now I used a soldering iron to do this and I really think it works the best to use a soldering iron versus trying to drill it. It comes out nice and clean. And notice there aren't any on the bottom. Again, don't put any on the bottom. But put a lot of holes all along the side to give those worms lots of uh, ways to get into this baited area. And this is the soldering iron I used. I mean just any typical simple five dollar soldering iron you can buy at the five and dime will work for this. Um, you can drill it but again I think it's much better to use a soldering iron and you know avoid the smoke as you're doing it because it'll smoke pretty bad. But it makes a nice clean uh, holes and stuff in it that aren't jagged at all. Now the container like I said I'm going to use is a large, you know, 14 gallon Rubbermaid tub. This happens to be one I use for making my bedding a lot. So you can see there's a lot of junk in the bottom of it. And I had some holes with some screens on it on the bottom of it, but it'll work just fine. So in essence, what we're gonna do is place this small one inside the larger one. Then we're gonna take all the contents from the tote and place that around the edge and surround this bait area, kind of making an island per se. And then we're going to fill the, uh, the small two gallon Rubbermaid tub with some really good material. And that gives a lot of surface area. And this way the worms don't have to travel very far either. And that's really critical if you want to have a successful migration. As if you're expecting the worms to travel eight or nine inches into an area, it's going to take them a long time. But if you put a baited area within a few inches of them, they'll get in there really quickly. And you'll see as we check this again next week what I mean on that. So let's take a look at the tote and I'll show you what that looks like, the one we're going to pull out. It's ready for harvest. It's been going for about four months now, I suppose. And we're going to take all the contents from that tote and place it in here around this, inside this large Rubbermaid tub. And you can see here this... Uh, the castings in this are definitely ready to be harvested. You know, of course, there's chunks, of, little chunks of paper here and there. But as you dig down into this, uh, it's really nice castings. Uh, there's no big chunks in here other than, you know, occasional pieces of paper here and there that, you know, they happen to have not gotten into and yet. I mean, you could leave this longer and they'd probably, you know, continue to work on this paper and stuff. But for right now, it's, it's basically ready to harvest. And I've said it before, but another key feature is if you're going to harvest, you need to make sure that there's not very much food uh, in 
the material that you're trying to harvest from. Because if there's already a lot of food in there, there's no reason for the worms to, to go from this material into the baited area. I haven't fed this system anything other than a little bit of bedding on the top, probably for the last three weeks. And again, if I dig down towards the bottom of this, you can see it's, you know, it's well, well finished. Some pieces of plastic that came out of something here. Uh, the very bottom of it's a little, you can see how it's kind of sticking together. It's a little moist, not muddy, but almost down at the very bottom. But that can be expected for a uh, non-flow through system because that moisture tends to sit down there towards the bottom. Uh, on the toad, it isn't nearly as bad as like if you were in a bucket system, but again, I mean, it's, it's definitely ready to harvest. I mean, material that's in here is stuff that the worms really aren't going to eat anyway. So, summarize one more time. We're going to take all this material and place it into a 15-gallon Rubbermaid tub that has a small 1-gallon or 2-gallon Rubbermaid tub inside it with a bunch of holes in it. So we'll get it set up so we can go ahead and start transferring all this material into there. Okay, so this is how this is going to sit down inside this larger Rubbermaid tub. And then we're going to fill all the way around the edges and put all the material that's in this tote right here uh, down along these edges. And that way there's a huge amount of surface area for the worms to go into here. And the furthest they have to migrate is only about three inches. So you'll see a huge influx of worms into this in a real short period of time. Uh, I don't have the lid for this. If I did, I'd put this lid on to keep any material from going into it right now. So I'm going to put a piece of cardboard over the top of it. But if I get anything in here, I'll just pick it out of here and throw it on the side. But if you do have the lid, if you place a lid on it right now, this would be a lot easier to do. I'm placing a little bit on all sides for this uh, small Rubbermaid tub will kind of get centered here. Then it won't move. If you placed it all on one side, it would tend to, to move it over to one side or the other. And kind of break this up as you're putting it in there. If you shake it back and forth like that, the material along this side will actually settle down a little bit. And we has good contacts with all the sides. Okay, so I have all the material in it. I mean, that tote was really full, so I actually had to pile it up along a little bit along the edges and stuff. So, and again, you know, the container you use for this, uh, it can be smaller. This one's a little bit large. It happened to be what I have, and it works pretty good. I like the, uh, the rubber, the soft rubber of the Rubbermaid tubs, because it, when I use a soldering iron, it makes really nice holes and stuff. So it works for me, but you could have made it a little bit smaller. So now we're going to put the bedding uh, in here that we're going to, and this is going to be what we use to set up the new tote. So I don't really want to fill this thing completely up with bedding because that'd be a lot of material to just dump directly into the tote. And we're probably going to do this twice. So two times I'm going to dump the contents of this into the new tote to set it up. So I don't have quite as much uh, material in there. 
I'm just taking this flower pot and I'm just going to set it there in the center and then I'll put bedding and stuff around it. And that way I've reduced the amount of bedding and stuff I'm going to put in here by quite a bit. And I mixed up fresh bedding with some broccoli, uh, kiwi, oranges, I mean a whole miscellaneous hodgepodge of uh, material in here. Uh, this bedding's been sitting for a long time, so I think they're really going to go into this material real quickly. It's some really good stuff. Now just basically fill up the, the bait container with this material. Make sure you have it all the way full, at least to covering all the holes that happen to be in there. To get it up to the very top, I'm just going to grab some and place some just strictly bedding at the very top of this thing. This bedding has a lot of uh, coffee grounds and stuff like that in it. Again, if you've watched any of my previous videos on how I make this bedding. So we could probably just put bedding strictly in here without any food and I'm sure they'd go into the material real quickly. You can see there's worms already in this bedding. They're sitting in these containers. So just about like that, completely full. It's all the way around the edges, touching it here. After a week, we'll check this. We'll pull this out, take any of the material from here, and put it into a new tote, or into the old tote, and set it up again with all the worms that are in here. Then we'll place this back in here one more time, just to make sure we have all the worms. But I think just in one baiting, you know, a week, week and a half, we'll, uh, we'll have to see when I got time to pull it out. But within that time frame, we'll get majority of the worms that are in here to come into this other area here. So we'll just go ahead and place a cover on this. We'll let it sit for about a week and a half, and we'll take a look at it then. Uh, I think we'll be amazed at how many of these worms are in this center section. This is Tom from Vermibag. Until next time. Ciao.